So there are some questions that are posted. So now what I will do is that I will uh, see what are the questions that are posted and try and answer those questions. And after that, we will have a brief discussion. Okay. So let us answer a few questions. Okay. So from center one two seven five, they have asked what is the physical significance of virtual world. There is no clear cut uh, way in which you can say that uh, there is a physical significance per se. Because virtual work is essentially a mathematical concept, and we have devised this concept, okay, purely for uh, our uh, uh, our convenience. Or, in other words, what you can say is that that you can take Newton's laws as fundamental, and then derive virtual work principle from that. Or, you can say that my virtual work principle is a fundamental principle, and then derive Newton's laws from that. Both are perfectly equivalent, okay. So, physical significance of virtual work. I don't think I can answer the proper answer for this question exists. Why? Because it is like asking what is the physical significance of Newton's law. Physical significance means that Newton's laws has particular implications in the real world. But these are axioms, and those axioms now you see that there are some empirical problems in the real world which follow those laws. So the physical uh, significance essentially is that that in any system in equilibrium you apply a virtual displacement, but virtual displacement by definition is something that you don't really apply. So it means in this case that you try to apply virtual displacement in your mind, okay, and you will see that certain nice properties of all those forces will come into picture, okay. This answer is a bit vague, I understand, but so is the question. So if you have any more questions, please send it on chat. Second, please explain solution of simple truss using principle of virtual work. Yes, we will do that. There is one example problem, and within a few moments we will solve that problem, okay. In fact, why don't I go to that problem, okay? So let us look at this problem number nine. What is asked here is that determine force in member CD by using the method of virtual work. Okay, so we can definitely solve this problem using principle of joints, principle of sections, and what not. Okay, so Professor Banerjee had taught you a bunch of methods. It's a very straightforward problem. You can solve it using a variety of techniques. But we want to solve it by principle of virtual work. Why? Because we just want to understand. Okay, that what does principle of virtual work? What can it do? And what we are asked to find out. Is force in member CD by using method of virtual work. Now, what we do is this: we replace. We want to find out force in this member CD, so we remove this member CD and replace that with two unknowns. Okay, why? Because when we remove this member, assuming that CD is in tension, what do we get? We get a pulling force at joint C and an equal and opposite pulling force at joint D. Okay, so FCD, FCD. Now we want to find out that given this W. What is this force F? Now think about it. Okay, think about it. That once, okay, that this is a is a is a great beauty of principle of virtual work. Okay, suppose if you have a truss like this, this is incredibly beautiful. This principle. Okay, so let us see how many joints does this have? One, two, three, four, five. So J is equal to five. How many uh, members does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So M is equal to seven. How many unknown reactions do we have? Two here because it's a hinge support, and one here because it's a roller. So R is equal to three. So the number of equations that we will have is two J is equal to ten, and M plus R is also equal to ten. So the number of equations, number of un and unknowns are same. So we would say that okay, great, this truss looks good. It is not statically indeterminate. But then the second question arises: that is this mechanism stable or not? Well, it is clearly stable. Why? Because this triangle, okay, is the basic triangle to which we add one joint, one more triangle, another joint, one more triangle. So we have created a system of triangles beginning with a triangle. So this entire truss is actually 
a rigid structure. Now to this rigid structure we are providing support reactions which are not parallel to each other and which are not meeting at one point. So this entire assembly is, is perfectly well constrained. Okay? It is a properly constrained system. Now suppose this member CD, let us remove this member. Okay? So we get very happy, say okay, everything is good and in that happiness we say we remove this member CD. Now when we remove this member CD, what happens? Number of members now becomes 7 minus 1. So the number of equations okay, still remains 10 because the number of joints have not changed. But the number of unknowns now become 9. So what do we have? We have number of equations that is less, uh, which, that is more than the number of joints and we clearly have a feeling that this assembly is not stable. Okay? This assembly is not stable. So not stable means what? That it is a mechanism. Now what is the meaning of a mechanism? We had discussed that a mechanism is something where we can change the configuration of the structure. Okay? So we can change the configuration of the structure without deforming any individual member. And if that can be done, we say that this is a mechanism. And clearly, this is a mechanism. Why? Because if you draw the displacement diagram for this, you can provide a virtual displacement like this. But this virtual displacement, okay, these dotted lines can as well be a real displacement for that structure. That we can take a truss like this where this member is removed and we can just deform it like this very easily without changing the length of any member. Why? Because for this statically determinate structure, upon removing one member, okay, it suddenly become a mechanism that it is freely possible to deform it like this. And principle of virtual work essentially makes use of that fact. What it says is this, that if you do not have any internal resisting forces, then under the application of this force W, what will happen? I provide it a virtual displacement which is very similar to the kind of mechanism this structure will deform into. What is the work done by this W? If I provide a virtual rotation delta theta, then this AE okay, we uh, will move exactly vertically to this and the displacement will be how much? This, dis this distance AE which we say A into delta theta. Now if this internal force were not there, then what will happen? Principle of virtual work tells me that the sum of all virtual work done by the active forces. Here this is not an active force because this virtual displacement is not pro, uh, does not pro produce any displacement here. It does not produce any displacement in the vertical direction here. So no work done here. Only work done is by W. Okay? And how much is the work done by? It is W times delta E which is the delta E is a displacement in the vertical direction which is nothing but A delta theta. So if there were no resisting force coming from this truss member, boom, this system cannot be in equilibrium because for this system to be in equilibrium, weight itself has to be 0. This W has to be equal to 0. But then what is this internal mechanism doing? That when you provide, put a virtual displacement on this system, which is very similar to the kind of mechanism this structure will undergo in the absence of this joint, okay, this internal displacement will end up in creating virtual work from these internal forces and now they will go in. Now how much is the vertical display, uh, the, the displacement here? What we saw is that take this line of action, okay, rotation is happening about point A. So drop from A to this a perpendicular. What is the distance? The distance is nothing but A into sin 60. Okay? So A into sin 60 or A into theta is the displacement in, the, in this direction. Which direction will it, will it be left or right? If the rotation is clockwise direction, the virtual displacement is to the right. And then what is the work done? FCD into A sin theta delta theta plus FCD into A sin theta delta theta. So what is this internal force doing? That's this internal force is also providing a counter virtual work to the virtual work done by the applied force. And together, this can make the system, okay, make the total virtual, virtual work done to be equal to 0. And we can find out that this is the FCD for this member. So see what we have learned from here. What we have learned from here is that, that for a statically determinate, properly constrained truss, we remove any member, we remove any support, that becomes a mechanism. And as a result, what is that reaction doing there? That, that, that when the structure becomes a mechanism, okay, the structure can deform in that particular mechanism, okay, in that particular manner. Okay. In this case, when we remove this, the structure can deform like this. Now what we do is that, we put that itself as the virtual displacement and then we see 
that in order to prevent that mechanism from really happening, okay, this internal force, okay, for example, are doing virtual work and providing a counter virtual work to the work done by this force and as a result maintain the system in equilibrium. If there were no force here, there will be no reaction here and you can never make this go to equal to 0 and the system is not in equilibrium. Okay? So, principle of virtual work, the kinematic degrees of freedom of the structure and the stability of the structure are all thus intricately linked with each other. Okay? So, this is the point. Okay? So, now third question is asked by center 1101. In the virtual work method, we can find out only one unknown. So, what if more unknown is there, what we can do? Now, note one thing, okay, I keep on saying statically determinate structure, that these are all statically determinate structures that we are doing at. Now, in a statically determinate structure, what it means is that if I remove even one constraint, okay, say for example, if I remove this roller support, boom, this structure is now free to rotate about point A, it becomes a mechanism. So, what, what can I do is that, that if I want to find out vertical reaction at point B, I remove this support, replace that by reaction. But then think to myself, that if this vertical support were not there, what possible motions can this structure have without deforming any member? The only motion it can have is rotation about point A. Now, what we do is we provide a small vertical uh, virtual rotation about point A and then this reaction will do some work this will do some work and we can put all those works together and say that for equilibrium, the reaction should be such that the total virtual work has to be 0 and we will get that. So, to cut the long story short, if a structure is statically determinate, if you want to find out some reaction, okay, if you find, want to find out one reaction, you can always remove that one reaction, make the structure a mechanism, give the structure virtual displacement like a mechanism and find out what is the overall virtual work done. So, you can always do it one after the other okay, in a statically determinate structure. For example, come to this problem. If you think very clearly, okay, this is not a statically determinate structure. Why? Because there are three of them. If you think very clearly about it, if you count the number of equations, number of unknowns and so on, you will see that the number of unknowns, okay, I leave that as an exercise for you, that the number of unknowns is more than the number of equations. Okay, that the structure strictly is statically indeterminate. But think about it, if I add 10 more of these lines, okay, 1, 2, 3, there are 3 more, three of these links, if I add 10 more of them, the degree of static indeterminacy of the structure keep on increasing. But note one thing, that if we do not provide this hydraulic cylinder, then even though I have huge number of, uh, huge amount of indeterminacy in the system, the structure still is a mechanism. Why? Because all of these parallel lines then can deform. Okay, the angle can keep changing and the structure can come down as a mechanism. So, we exploit that property and say that in the absence of this hydraulic cylinder, okay, what will happen? I can deform the resulting structure in such a way that all the lengths remain the same, but the structure changes configuration because it is a mechanism. And what is this hydraulic cylinder doing? That hydraulic cylinder is essentially preventing that mechanism. How is it preventing the mechanism? That it is providing this force from the hydraulic cylinder and in the language of principle of virtual work. Okay, that this is doing some virtual work and to counter that, it is providing a reaction and making sure that this has a counter and the total virtual work is 0 such that there is enough reaction produced here and the system remains in equilibrium. So, to cut the long story short, okay, in the virtual work method, if there are more than one unknowns, we can always choose okay, appropriate mechanisms. Okay, we remove that particular constraint. Okay, and choose appropriate unknowns. For example, in this case, if I ask to find, if you are asked to find out that what is the horizontal force here, then what do we do? We do not give virtual displacement here, we remove this support and replace this by a roller and a horizontal force and now instead of making sure that these points remain here, we make sure that in the virtual uh, work principle, point C remains stationary and point A now ultimately goes exactly, it does the same thing that we had done previously to point C, we now do that to point A. And there are various examples that we will look into that depending on what reaction you want to, for a statically determinate structure, you can always figure out what is the appropriate virtual displacement to give such that we get exactly that particular unknown. In the triangle problem, okay, we will ask answer this one last uh, uh, question, one, uh, it is by center 1, 2, 2, 4. In the triangle problem, first problem, if you are considering moment at O, how to consider the direction of rotation? Okay. Let me briefly explain that. See, principle of virtual work, uh, Newton's laws, they are mathematically all equivalent. But as far as the implementation is concerned, okay, in some cases, principle of virtual work can be quite complicated, whereas in some cases, use of Newton's laws can be very complicated and principle of virtual work can be really straightforward. 
okay. So, let us look at the first uh, example problem that we had discussed, okay. Something like this, we will just make it very short. This was a hinge support, this was a roller support. We were given a force P here, this is A, this is B. Now, what we did is this, okay. We want to find out what is the reaction at this support. So, what we do? We just remove this, replace that by an unknown reaction R. Now, there are infinite number of ways in which I can provide virtual displacements to the structure. But what I want is that I want the active forces or the forces that do work to be only this P and this R. So, we give it a virtual displacement in such a way that we rotate this assembly of course, in a virtual manner in the clockwise direction we can also put anti clockwise about this joint O. And not what do we do now? Look here that we had discussed that this is O, this is A, this is B. Now, this O A is perpendicular okay. So, this is the line uh, point about which the rotation happens. This is directly I am joining them. We want to find out what is the displacement in the perpendicular direction which will be nothing but simply delta theta into B. Now, we want to find out what is the horizontal displacement of this point because this force is in the horizontal direction. What do we do? We just see that this line goes straight up okay. So, the vertical display the horizontal displacement of this point will be nothing but A delta theta in the horizontal direction. Now, the only virtual work is done by this force and this reaction. So, what do we have? P minus A delta theta is the virtual work done by force P plus R B delta theta should be equal to 0 or in other words P A divided by B is equal to R and this is precisely equivalent to take in moment balance about point O is the point that I wanted to make, okay. So, with this we will have uh, we will visit a 3 4 centers, okay, before taking a break in another 10 minutes. If you have any more questions, please send it via chat, okay, we will be very glad to answer them. 1305. Yes, in I can hear problem, you. why force in member FCD, Haan. you have taken in both the cases in calculation as positive. Because we just took that as a sign convention, okay. We assume that the member C D is in tension, okay. I, I have perfectly justified in doing that. We assume that the member C D is in tension, okay. I can as well say that is in compression, but it does not matter. And then what we do is that when we replace this member here, okay, replace this C D, we have to put the appropriate forces. So, since C D is in tension, okay, clearly the force that will act at joint C coming from C D should be a pulling force in the inward direction. Similarly, the force acting at joint D coming from the uh, from this truss should be in the inward direction. So, because I assumed this to be in tension, okay, it uh, this is the direction, but when we solve the problem, it turns out that F C D is minus W by 2 sin theta, which means that what I had assumed previously as tension was not right and actually this force was compression. It is just a matter of taking a sign convention, like taking a reaction upward or downwards or sideways or left side, left side or right side. If it is not appropriate, the sign will come out to be negative, just as simple as that, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 1112, go ahead. Considering both the methods, which is more reliable, sir? Both are reliable, both are equivalent, okay. Both Newton's laws and this, both are equivalent. But reliable, when you say reliable, what do you mean by that? Both are equally, both are the same methods. So, when you say reliable, Okay, so in what context are you using that word reliable? Dependable, sir. It is dependable, okay. So, both are dependable, but the problem for example, we will solve a couple of other problems where you will see that there are certain complex mechanisms okay, in which for example, uh, Newton's laws okay, for example, will be much more difficult to implement this method will be far more easier. Again for example, this problem look at this problem, this problem is clearly clearly much more transparent using principle of virtual work. It is literally two line answer whereas, to solve it is in Newton's laws we have to draw at least three free body diagrams and to make sure the coordinate axis is oriented properly so on. If not you will get lot of equations and if you do not draw free body diagrams appropriately you may not be able to solve the problem. Whereas, here 
once we have an idea about the, how the virtual displacements can be given to the system, this is just one line if you think about it, one line, two line, three line, you get the answer immediately. So, for complex mechanisms, principle of virtual work okay, is a great boon, okay, no question about that. Okay, but there are some other problems okay, in which Newton's laws may be better, uh, may be applied in a much more easy way, easier way. For example, problem find the tutorial, okay. that is one example where principle of virtual work is actually not that great an idea. So, it all depends on the problem, but one great thing about the principle of virtual work is that, that if the students, they understand how to visualize the mechanisms, okay, that okay, if I remove some structure, then this is way in which can, in which, in which the structure can go into some mechanism. Then the physical intuition becomes perfect, then by just looking at a problem, okay, he can immediately figure out, he or she can immediately figure out, oh, this structure is stable, this structure is not stable, this structure is definitely statically indeterminate. You can figure out that the structure is statically indeterminate, but these particular forces can be obtained. So, if you can understand how the different mechanisms can happen in a structure upon removing one, or one member, okay, then that is a great boon. You can immediately figure out that what forces are obtainable and what forces are not obtainable if the structure is statically indeterminate and so on or if it is a mechanism. So, principle of virtual work combined with Newton's laws, okay, if you have a comprehensive understanding, then nothing can beat that. 1175, go ahead for your question. Sir, virtual work is alternate me method or it is specific for some type of problem? No, virtual, virtual work method can always be used. It can, it is equivalent of using principle of, uh, is equivalent of using force balance and movement balance. They are equivalent, but only thing is that, that for certain problems, especially for problems without friction and complicated mechanisms, okay, virtual work is highly dependable, okay, in the sense that dependable in the sense that it makes the problem solution very transparent, very easy and you do not have to draw huge number of free body diagrams, which may not be very clear if you want to apply. Uh, Newton's laws, force balance and movement balance, but it is not that some problems you can solve with this, others you cannot. In principle, all problems can be solved using both methods in engineering mechanics, but you will see that in structural mechanics, solid mechanics or in finite element method, okay, for approximate methods, you need to use principle of virtual work okay, in order to use compatibility conditions, but that is beyond the scope of this course. But as far as EMAC is concerned, both are equivalent, but some problems can be much better solved with virtual work, some problem much better solved with Newton's laws. Thanks. 1139, go ahead for your question. In that uh, truss problem, okay. in the truss problem, you have shown uh -huh. the, uh, d theta. So, d theta is uh, same for, uh, for both sides? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I had shown it same for both sides. Okay. So, I did not explain that. So, let me briefly explain. You want the answer to that, right? Why is it same on both sides? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, the, it is, uh, the reason is this. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I should have mentioned that. Think about this. Okay. Point E okay, is common to this triangle also and to this triangle also. Now, let us say that if we apply delta theta 1 here and delta theta 2 here, then what will happen is that, that point E, when you look at this triangle, will move down by delta theta 1 into A, whereas when you look at point E from this triangle, it will move down by delta theta A into delta theta 2. And if delta theta 1 is not equal to delta theta 2, what you will see is that there is a split that will come, that these two triangles will separate from each other. And when they separate from each other, the internal force that is acting here will also do some virtual work and that has to be taken into account. So, in order to prevent that, we make sure that both these delta 2, theta, uh, two delta theta are the same and as a result, this point E, which is common to these both triangles, moves together. So that is the reason, so that we are not creating any openings in the structure. Is that okay? Uh, one more uh, question. Yeah. Theta is the original angle. Theta it's is the original angle. Theta is the original angle. Theta is the change. D theta, I, I should not say like this, okay. So, let me put it this way, okay. So, I think this is the, I can see, I see where you are going. I see where you are going. So, let me put it this way, that this delta theta is not actually the change in this angle, okay. It is not change in that delta theta, these two lines, okay. One line and two line, that angle is not changing. On the other hand, we are giving this entire triangle, a rigid rotation about point A. So, I think that may be a point of confusion, I agree. It is not that delta theta is the change in theta of that angle. I should have made this as some delta alpha. This angle theta, it does not change, okay. So, please sorry for that confusion. This angle is theta, but this delta theta is not the change in that angle. On the other hand, it is a complete rigid rotation given to this triangle for rotation about A. Because a triangle, 
you cannot change its angle okay without deforming the members okay because triangle is rigid okay is that point clear okay, that is uh, c a e is theta and c dash a e dash is also theta no which which one which one c a e c a e is theta yes yes that is also theta yes 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 and c dash this is c dash okay so c dash a yes c dash e e prime is also theta yes if this is c dash this okay because because it's a triangle for change in the angle of a triangle uh, c prime a e prime yes that is also theta because for a triangle triangle is rigid what does that mean that in order to change that relative angle we need to deform one or more of the members okay which you don't want to do here because then in the internal forces will also do work okay so that both angles remain the same thank you sir yeah thanks okay so we take a break for 20 minutes Thank you.